Most faults that I see in the golf swing are a byproduct of a bad golf setup. And today I want to do a deep dive and give you the three components that are key ingredients to having a good setup so you can get the most out of your golf swing. So let's dive into this. What are the three components? We're going to talk about posture, we're going to talk about body angles, and we're going to talk about ball position. And we're doing a deep dive. I want to tell you that right up front. We're doing a deep dive into this golf setup, but I can promise you this, if you stick around to the end and you listen to all this information, you are going to start playing better golf. So let's get right into it. Golf posture. When I'm talking about posture, I'm talking about bends, okay? Knee bends, hip bends, shoulders rounded, shoulders back, head down, head up, any type of bends in the body, all right? So the most common mistake that I see is too much bend in the neck and too much roundness in the shoulders. Why is that? Have you ever been told to keep your head down? <laughs> I guarantee if you've played any golf, you've been told to keep your head down. So what happens? Well, you get set up there and you're like, hey, I gotta keep my head down. That's what everybody tells me. That's just bad advice because what happens is you start taking your chin, rotating it down, round your shoulders. Now you tell me, does this look like an athletic position? My head is down. Does this look like somebody's gonna hit a good golf shot? It sure as heck doesn't, right? So what are the bends that you actually wanna see? Don't let anybody tell you to keep your head down. It's just bad advice. That's a separate video. I'm not gonna talk about it right now. Here's what you wanna see. You want a little bit of knee bend. You want some forward tilt at the hip. You want your shoulders to be relaxed and your chin to be up. So let me show you how you can get into that position. And if you've got some tips or some suggestions of your own, be sure to leave them in a comment because you could probably teach me something. All right, let's go right from the ground all the way up. Knee bend, okay? I want you to put your hands on your thighs like this, okay? And I want you to bend your knees just a little bit. So if this was zero bend, Okay, I'm thinking maybe 20, 25 degrees of bend. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your hands down your thighs till your fingertips touch your knee, the top of your kneecap. Okay, that's gonna help me get the right knee bend, but also the right hip bend. So let me go through it again. I'm gonna stand straight up and down. I'm gonna just put a little bit of flex in my knee so they feel lively. Hands here, slide them down. Okay, that is the position that I wanna be in in terms of knee bend and hip bend, okay? How about my shoulders and my neck? Believe it or not, those things right there can greatly impact your flexibility and your ability to move, all right? So I want you to feel like your shoulders are natural. What do I mean by that? Well, some of the greatest golfers of all time, their shoulders were a little bit more rounded, like this. That's kind of naturally how they stood. Some of the younger guys, okay, and younger gals, they have more posture that's back like this. Okay, I would say that you're probably better to be a little bit rounded, okay, but relaxed, than you are to force this position where you feel like you've got to keep your back straight. I don't think that's a good position. I don't think it creates relaxation. I think it creates tension. It's not going to help you swing the golf club better. So let's go through this one more time. Then we're going to dive into body angles next. So golf posture, all right? You're going to stand straight up and down, okay? You're gonna put just a little bit of bend, a little bit of flex in the knees. Take your hands, slide them down. Let your shoulders naturally relax. Lift the chin just slightly. And from that position, your posture angles are gonna be pretty good. Now, love to hear from you. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? I wanna hear from you because maybe you can teach me something as well. So be sure to leave a comment. Now, body angles. Okay, what do I mean by body angles? What I mean by body angles is I mean kind of like tilt, aim, these types of things, all right? So the most common mistake I see, two mistakes that I see in terms of body angles, okay? And if this is you, you gotta change this. Number one is feet are too square, okay? People think you gotta keep your feet square because they hear this word a lot in golf. You gotta be square to the target, square to the target. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a second. At the end, I'm gonna give you a tip talking about aim. If you're slicing the ball, listen, you're gonna love it. All right, so. They get their toes straight up, okay? This decreases mobility, makes it hard to move. So they're gonna wanna point them a little bit. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit in terms of like what that should look like in terms of body angles. So the second mistake I see a lot of golfers make, and I'm going through these mistakes because I want you to be thinking about your own game a little bit, right? And we're giving you the fix. But the second mistake I see in terms of body angles is the trail side 
right side for me gets too high and they get aimed to the left for a right-handed golfer. Now, why do they do this? Well, most golfers slice, right? They see the ball go to the right, so what do they just naturally do? They start aiming to the left, and they start getting their right side high. What happens is, is it just causes them to slice more. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the video in a, in a way to fix your slice. So body angles, what do you wanna do? What is the positions, what are the process, the tips, the suggestions that you can go through to get in that spot? Well, let's just go through them. We're gonna go from the ground back up. Number one, feet. I wanna see your feet flared slightly. Now, based on your flexibility, if you don't have any flexibility or really tight, you're gonna want more, what I'm gonna call toe flare, than somebody who's really flexible. So, for me, I'm gonna point mine at about 20 to 25 degrees, all right? Now, maybe you're gonna take your lead foot, which for me is my left foot, and point it just a little bit more than the trail foot, okay? That might be a good thing, because it helps you open up, but you definitely wanna flare them just a little bit. So that would be number one. Number two, in terms of body angles is what we're gonna do in terms of the hips. We're working our way up, right? With the hip, if you slice the ball, which is most of you watching this, I want your lead hip, your left hip for right-handed golfer to be slightly bumped over your lead foot. Notice how you take it, bump it a little bit, all right? And I'm also gonna close it slightly, ever so slightly. So I'm set up, I bump it, and I close it just a little bit. All right, so that's the feet. That's the hips. Let's talk about next, the arms. Where should the arms be? Well, you kind of know where we're going with this already. Your lead arm, left arm for me, is gonna be slightly higher than your trail arm. Okay, this is gonna help us improve our contact and help us actually start drawing the golf ball. So I'm set up, boom, and I'm a little bit like that. Now the last one would be kind of the shoulders, which is gonna kind of naturally fall in place if the other ones are where they need to be. But you're gonna feel like your shoulders I like the shoulders to be just ever so slightly tilted a little bit and to the right of the target for a right-handed golfer. So I'm set up, a little to the right, and a little bit of tilt, all right? So those are the terms of the body angles. Let me recap it, and then we're gonna dive into ball position, the third component that you need to understand. All right, toes are flared, right? Okay, my lead hip is bumped a little bit, ever so slightly closed. Shoulders ever so slightly closed, a little bit of tilt, okay? Lead arm is a little higher than trail arm. And those are what we wanna do in terms of the body angles. Now, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I love hearing from you. If you like that, you don't like that, or maybe you got a different tip that's worked well for you, you be sure to let us know, because like I said, I can always learn from you, and I read every comment. So be sure to put those in there. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now, ball position. This is one of the most overlooked things in golf. Not, today I'm talking about body angles, posture with the irons. Someday down the road I'll do one with driver, but we're talking about irons, ball position with the irons. Now the biggest mistake that I see amateur golfers make in ball position is they get the ball too far forward in the stance. Now believe it or not, when the ball gets too far forward, it actually puts you in a bad spot in terms of your aiming. Obviously contact becomes an issue, but there's a lot more things that, that tie into ball position that can really be causing you to hit poor golf shots than just simply one particular thing. So where do we want the ball to be? Now today we're talking about irons. Okay, just irons. I'll do a separate video down the road here about drivers, but today we're talking about irons. So when we hit an iron, we want to come in contact with the ball when the club is traveling in a descending motion, all right? So the club is traveling, we want to come in contact with the ball as the club is tracking in a downward motion. So we've got to get the ball in the right spot for that. So I'm going to show you a simple drill that you can do to get it in that spot, and then I'm going to show you how we actually train it here at the academy with my Reimer short game training aid. So where do we want it to be? Let's answer that first. We want it to be basically in the center to ever so slightly forward of center. So what you can do is simply put your feet together, separate your lead foot towards the target, separate your trail foot away from the target, relatively equal distances. When you do that, the ball is gonna be pretty darn close in terms of your irons. Now, for me here at the academy, I like to use the Reimer training aid. So what we'll do is we'll just set it down here. I'll get a ball in place. Now what I like about this is it actually helps me with ball position, but also it gives me straight line for aim and all those types of things, those other types of stuff that we've been talking about as we've been going through this. So when you're set in there, go ahead and just put it straight out from the little pointer here. Separate your feet, okay? And now you can see where that ball is relative to your left foot and your right foot. 
So getting the ball in the right spot in terms of ball position can greatly impact, of course, your contact, but also in terms of the curve of the golf ball. Now, I told you here that at the end I would give you some specific drills for those of you who actually slice the golf ball in terms of getting in a good setup position. So, if you're slicing the golf ball, this is what I want you to check. Number one is, is that you're probably aimed too far to the left of the target. We'll talk about that. Okay, so you're probably aimed left if you're a right-handed golfer. Number two is your trail side, your right side for a right-handed golfer is probably too high. Okay, and third is the ball is probably too far forward. All right, so how are we gonna fix that? Well, it's pretty simple, folks. We're just gonna reverse the cycle. So I'm gonna put my feet together. I'm gonna actually move my aim slightly closed or to the right of the target. So you'll notice my feet are slightly aimed to the right. All right, I'm gonna make sure that my lead hip is bumped over a little bit, over my lead foot. I'm gonna make sure my trail arm is underneath and my lead arm is a little bit high. And from this position here, I'm gonna be set up to actually swing the club from the inside and start drawing the golf ball. So believe it or not, next time you head to the golf course, if you're hitting bad golf shots, it might not even be your golf swing. It might be something that you're doing before you actually even swing the golf club. These tips, these ideas can give you checkpoints and an understanding of how you need to set up to actually hit good quality golf shots.